Hey, this is Steve. Question for you. What is the loudest instrument? You know, when I was in band in high school, I would have said that the low brass instruments were the loudest instruments in the band. Not because they actually were, but because I played euphonium. And so, of course, they must be the best and the loudest. It's not actually true. The drum line was way louder than anything that I could produce on my euphonium. <clears throat> the snare drums, the bass drum, the cymbals, these are great candidates for being the loudest. You know, sometimes in a rock band, you'll even see plexiglass around the drummer to protect the other band members from its sound. So surely, they must be the loudest instrument. But they're not. According to Guinness Book of World Records, the loudest instrument is the Boardwalk Hall Auditorium Organ in Atlantic City. Now, reportedly, it's six times louder than a train whistle. But since a train whistle is often measuring around 100 decibels or so, I find it a little difficult to believe that the organ is measuring at 600 decibels. <clears throat> but I didn't come here today to talk about organs or train whistles. I came here today because of this. So how does an opera singer do that? Without any external amplification, no microphones, the voice can soar above an orchestra, which can reach amazing volumes. So how is it possible? What is it about the voice that allows us to hear it above an orchestra? Let me start with the demonstration. If I play low C, C2, on my piano, what do you hear? Yes, you hear the C, but you're also hearing overtones. You can hear this better if I press and hold the, the pedal while I play the C. Now what you're hearing is sympathetic vibrations from the overtones, or harmonics, that happens above the fundamental pitch. First at the octave, then at a fifth, then the next octave, a third, etc., etc., etc. Certain harmonics are going to ring more than others. It's this collection of harmonics uh, or formant that give each instrument its distinctive sound. Uh, it's how we distinguish a trumpet from a clarinet, a guitar from a harp, and also why your voice sounds different than mine. But wait a minute. If all of our voices are different, how is it that someone can impersonate someone else, sound like someone else? Let's think about our voices as a bottle with some water in it. When I blow across the top of the bottle, I hear a pitch. I'm disturbing the air in the bottle and causing the air to vibrate in a way that creates an audible pitch. Our voices work in a similar, yet not quite the same way. We're also moving air through our vocal, vocal folds to create audible noise. But unlike our bottle, our vocal tract is actually quite flexible. We can manipulate our tract to sound like any number of things or people. I could change my voice to sound like Kermit the Frog. Or Yoda, can I sound like? <laughs> I can even use my voice to sound like an instrument. Depending on how I shape my vo vocal tract, I can sing many different types of styles, from country. I tried to be a country singer, but I just couldn't write a song. To opera. Torre ador angard. Torre ador, torre ador. Or any other style that I would like. And that brings me back to our opera singer from earlier. Well, it turns out that the human voice has a built-in amplifier. Remember I mentioned formants, a grouping of harmonics above the fundamental pitch? Well, one of the things that classically trained singers learn to do is to shape their vocal tract in a way that allows the third, fourth, and fifth for harmonics, or the singer's formant, uh, to pop out, to ring. Usually this is happening around 3 kilohertz. This is important because instruments don't have the same pop at 3 kilohertz. That spot seems to be reserved for the voice. That's what makes the voice audible, even without electronic amplification, even with a full orchestra behind them. They have that singer's formant that is helping them pop out above the sound of the orchestra. The voice may not be the loudest kid on the block, 
but the singer's format makes it pretty darn special. So next time you're singing or listening to someone sing, you can think about one more way that the human voice is amazing. This is Steve Danielson. Keep the music moving.